Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage the 20th Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Mark A. Milley and Mrs. Holly Ann Milley. How's everybody doing? You can grab your seats there for a minute. You know, Holly and I walked in and we're very humbled by this tonight. And I met the uh, Doyles, the Coyles, the O'Connors, the Murphys, the, Kellys. the Millies, the Kellys. And I could have sworn I was back home in Boston. And I was very motivated. I was very motivated to come right down here in Greenwich and say, go Red Sox. It's a mixed crowd, a mixed crowd. It's a wonderful thing to be loved. <laughs> hey, look, at, uh, in all seriousness, uh, thank you very much. And Holly and I are uh, very uh, humbled uh, to receive this uh, distinction. And, uh, and we want to just let you know that it's a real privilege for us uh, to join you here tonight uh, and to celebrate uh, the incredible mission of the American Red Cross. Uh, we know we know that an event like this takes a lot of planning and hard work, so we'd like to take a moment to recognize some of the individuals who poured their heart and souls into tonight and into the Red Cross for many, many years. Uh, first, would like to thank those that were on the video. Uh, General Ray Odierno, who passed away uh, this past year. He was a personal friend of mine. Uh, he's a giant in military history, and his lovely wife, Linda. Uh, and they were also incredibly supportive of the Red Cross. So uh, may God rest your soul, Ray, and thank you so much, Linda. And. Over to Holly, Miss Red Cross. <laughs> and to uh, Gail McGovern, uh, Red Cross CEO, thank you for that wonderful uh, video. And to my distant sister, Jill Coyle, wherever you are, chair of the Red Cross, right down here in the front. Thank you so much. And Mr. Kobe Langley, Senior Vice President, uh, American Red Cross. And how about give it up for Stephanie Dunn Ashley? And let us also thank all the first responders, all the cops, the firemen, the EMS. Thank you so much for what you do every day. For 141 years, thousands of Red Cross volunteers have provide, provided care and comfort to countless people. This care and comfort often arrives during the darkest and most difficult moments of their lives. And the connection uh, between those of us in uniform, between the United States military and the Red Cross, is rich and enduring. Founded, as you all know, by Civil War nurse Clara Barton in 1881, 16 years after our nation's bloodiest war ended. The Red Cross was born of her selfless wartime mission to bring supplies to soldiers on the front lines of battle. 
And today, nearly 150 years later, the Red Cross continues this incredible tradition. The Red Cross is deployed alongside our soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, guardians, and Coast Guardsmen in every U.S. conflict since the Spanish-American War. Beyond providing medical care, shelter, training, and other critical services to the communities of America, the Red Cross has offered much needed services and support to members of the armed forces and their families. You can see the spirit of the Red Cross through the selfless service they provide and the principles that guide their work each and every day. Each year, more than 110,000 military families receive assistance from the American Red Cross during emergencies such as the death or serious illness of a loved one. For years, the Red Cross has also brought forth critical financial assistance, transportation, and other services that ease unbearably difficult times. And the Red Cross has provided significant support to the members of our military from the first days of enlistment to faraway combat zones. The Red Cross has delivered in-person services for our troops on more than 100 military installations and deployment sites worldwide. And when service calls our men and women in uniform away from home, the Red Cross has eased the burden for families by offering pre-deployment preparedness tools to meet the challenges that accompany the absence of their loved ones. When service ends, the Red Cross has remained a steadfast friend. They offer a variety of services to transitioning veterans, ranging from food, clothing, and shelter, to job referrals, financial, legal, and mental health counseling services. Mark and I often visit local Red Cross chapters where we have met many dedicated individuals who volunteer their time, skills, and effort to the Red Cross. The dignity and care that you, the Red Cross, provides in life's critical moments is extraordinarily powerful. And it's why the Red Cross remains in the hearts of so many of us in the military for the rest of our lives. And remarkably, the Red Cross has answered the call to help others in yet another way, emergency relief in the wake of natural disasters. From natural disasters to a single home fire, the Red Cross has consistently responded when families are displaced and they are in desperate need. They also have been quick to partner when help is needed. We saw the Red Cross work with the Guard and Reserve units fighting the long and ongoing battle against COVID. So whether alongside troops in Eastern Europe and Poland and Latvia, Lithuania and Estonia, or at a forward base in the Middle East or Africa, such as Djibouti, or in your own backyard when disaster strikes. The Red Cross has provided incredible services to help the people of the United States military in our hour of need. The Red Cross has consistently been prepared for anything that could happen. And your courageous mission has often called us into some of the most grueling and unforgiving environments places scorched by fire, raised by hurricanes, or leveled by war and the crucible of combat. Going into harm's way has always been a part of the Red Cross. Clara Barton once said, I may be compelled to face danger, but never fear it. And while our soldiers can stand and fight, I can stand and feed and nurse them. And when people start to pick up the pieces, and rebuild, the Red Cross has continued the support. Red Cross donations have enabled essential home repairs, replacement clothes, and food on dinner tables. Through their assistance, they have provided dignity and hope. They say that disasters start and end at home, and that's because the consequences are personal and emotional. In this way, whether it's a flood, a wildfire, or a hurricane, or snowstorm, when the Red Cross has lifted people through the disaster, they embody their vision of turning compassion into action. Since its founding, the Red Cross mission to alleviate suffering has remained constant. From the psychological to the physical, they have seen the person behind the uniform and the families that stand shoulder to shoulder with them. 
but this is simply the Red Cross way. They have consistently put themselves at the core of difficult circumstances in the hardest hit areas. The well-known image of the Red Cross in the white circle extends well beyond the borders of our country and really extends through all corners of the globe. And it means care, assistance, and human dignity. We often see this symbol where the unthinkable has become reality. No matter where they are, where there is disaster and crisis, there also goes the Red Cross, the symbol of relief and hope. You know, we in uniform, we swear an oath. There's 190 countries in the United Nations, and we are the only military who swears an oath to an idea. We don't swear an oath to a king or a queen. We don't swear an oath to a tyrant or a dictator or a would-be dictator. We swear an oath to a document, the Constitution of the United States of America. And in that is an idea, the idea that is America. That is an idea for which my parents fought for in World War II. When my father hit the beach at Iwo Jima and Saipan and Tinian and Kwajalein, he fought for that idea. When my uncle was in the Korean War and cousins in Vietnam and the wars in the desert in Afghanistan and Iraq, those of us in uniform, we fight for something. We fight for you. We fight for the idea that is America. And as you just saw in that film, that idea is very powerful. And every single one of us holds it close to our heart. We are willing to die for that idea. We are willing to separate from our loved ones suffer grievous wounds. And that idea is powerful. That idea is hated by al-Shabaab, al-Qaeda, the Taliban. It's hated by the Nazis. It's hated by the imperial Japanese and the fascists. It's an incredibly powerful idea. And like all ideas, it's quite simple. And as it's said in the film, and I've said thousands of times before, we fight for that idea, and we're never going to turn our back on it no matter what. And that idea says that you and I, no matter who we are, whether you're a male or a female, whether you're gay or straight or something in between, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you're black or you're white or you're Asian or Indian, or no matter what the color of your skin is. It doesn't matter what your last name is. It doesn't matter your country of origin. It absolutely doesn't matter if you're Catholic or Protestant, Muslim or Jew or choose not to believe. None of that matters. It doesn't matter if you're tall or short, rich or poor, famous or common. What matters is that we are all, every single one of us, is an American. And under these colors of red, white, and blue, under these colors of red, white, and blue, every one of us is born by the grace of the Almighty God, we are born free and equal. And you will rise or you will fall based on your talent, your skill, your knowledge, your attributes. And you're going to be judged by the content of your character, not the color of your skin. That's America. That's why I fight. That's why I wear this uniform. And that's what the Red Cross supports. And Holly and I just want to say thank you to you, the Red Cross, because where we go and where we fight for you, 
It is the Red Cross that fights for us. It is the Red Cross that brings darkness when all hope seems lost and we've lost a comrade and we hold a dying soldier in our arms. It's the Red Cross that brings determination when we feel despair. And it's the Red Cross that brings courage and calm when there's nothing but fear and chaos. So thank you, Red Cross. Thank you for what you do, and may God bless America.